Hello, this is David, and welcome to my nesting box project. So specifically, I'm making this for chickadees. I'm in the West, so I, I am using a smaller hole than the plans call for. I'm using one inch and one eighth opening to keep the house sparrows out, because we do have those in the area. Okay, birdhouse project. So step number one, you need to buy preferably a piece of cedar that's one inch thick by six inches wide by four feet long. This actually will end up being three quarters of an inch thick, five and a half inches wide and four feet long. Uh, that's just the way dimensional lumber works. It's always got a little shorter dimensions by using about, about half an inch. So the, this is the front of the birdhouse. And so you just cut that. It's five and a half inches wide. So you just cut off eight inches. And you drill a hole one and an eighth of an inch. That's one inch down. This dimension right here is one inch down from the very top. Um, I also, just for added ease of exit, put in some grooves with the angle grinder cutting wheel. This helps the baby birds get out when the time comes. Okay, so this is the second step in the birdhouse project. The plans actually called for, these are the sides, called for the five and a half to be cut two lengths of eight inches long. I'm putting a slight uh, slope in the top, so I put a one inch longer on this side, which this ends up being nine, that ends up being eight. You take two pieces, cut them at that angle. I'm using the miter saw here, turned out to be about 13, I believe 13 degrees. Cut it, and then you've got those done. The base of the nest is the simplest of all. It's simply another piece of your five and a half inch by one board, and you're just cutting it exactly four inches. Um, that's because you have the width of this up against the uh, of the sides up against the front, and so that takes off. If it's three quarters of an inch, that takes off an inch and a half. On this width but this is fine this is optimal for chickadees uh, four and a half or no sorry four inches by five and a half in this longer dimension they like this size and now we're down to the final cuts we've got the top which is about eight and a quarter inches the back which is about 12 inches they don't have to be precise because they're going to overhang. The back is going to overhang on the top and bottom, so you have a place to affix it to a tree or a pole, and the top is going to overhang over the front to give an eave over the entry hole. Now we want to make sure everything fits together perfectly. Uh, it needs to be relatively tight. It's going to need to have a bevel on the lid. Um, you can find what that bevel is. In my case, I'm using the disc sander and I'm using my side with the angle to set that. And if you remember, that's about 13 degrees. And so now I can come in here and sand that down to where it needs to be to match the back. And this is going to be um, a, a hinged top so you can get in there and clean it out and inspect it. So now you can see where that comes into play. This is the back sitting on the bench, the side facing us, and you can see the top now is beveled. 
so that when it is mounted with the hinges, it is flush and creates a seal. We are going to put a, fall, a small strip of wood above that as well to act as a rain gutter. But this whole thing will be able to pivot out of here and there won't be any big cracks in it. We need to do a similar thing for the front because the front needs to stay in line with this. So we have to get rid of that excess wood right on the base part of that. The back dimension is right, but that needs to be beveled. We might as well do that while we've got the disc sander set up. Okay, got everything beveled on the disc sander and a little bit on the belt sander to just make sure the sides were nice and flat where they come together. This, this really was a piece of scrap wood that was cupped and uh, had some stain spilled on it. I got it pretty well cleaned up and it's pretty tight now for each individual part. One thing that I forgot to mention is I actually have more than four feet. So if you don't have four feet, then you may not want to do this uh, bevel on here because it leaves very little left over. Or you may want to adjust other things. I, if I had to do all over again, I would adjust where this hole is, make it down just a little bit because I only have three quarters of an inch here where you're supposed to have an inch. But the critical thing I believe is the fact that this is about six inches off the base and that's the perfect height for chickadees because if it's too low the chicks get out too soon if it's too high they may not get out at all so so there are some considerations with the fact that i made the changes uh with just to get the slanted roof the other thing is, that isn't in the plans is i wanted this to be the base to be recessed about an eighth of an inch uh, so that any rain that does come down here just kind of falls off and doesn't soak this piece. Um, the other thing, um, it looks like, you know, a good dry fitting, you know, dry fitting. Everything looks good here. A couple of clamps come in really handy with this. Um, I'm not sure yet what I'm going to use for fasteners. I may just use what I have on hand. If you build this out of cedar... Uh, you're going to get a lot more longevity out of it. This is just fur, so I may just put some, some little brad nails in it uh, and maybe a screw or two to keep it tight. Uh, if you're going to build one out of cedar, consider maybe galvanized or stainless steel fasteners on it to, uh, so that it lasts longer. Okay, so final assembly, I used a couple different size brad nails or finishing nails and uh, some Gorilla Glue. Um, and then ultimately I got rid of the hinges for the top and I just uh, put a beveled strip of wood there um, to kind of hold the top in. The, I screwed it into the back. Um, and then the the top is free to uh, to move after taking out just two screws, so you can clean it out. Um, I'm going to mount this on a PVC pole, and uh, I you also you have to drill drainage holes in the bottom. I did four quarter inch holes in the bottom near the corners, and then the sides need. Uh, two vent holes, quarter inch holes towards the top uh, to help with cross ventilation. And the, the final product, I didn't uh, put any kind of stain or sealant on it. I wanted to keep it uh, as safe for the birds as possible. If you do cedar, you could do uh, that Japanese method where you burn the wood a little bit with a blowtorch and then brush it and then put some sort of uh, oil on it uh, to make it weatherproof. But really, I didn't make mine to last. I just did it uh, to get rid of some scrap wood and uh, kill some time during the what's left of the pandemic in 2021.